In this video, we are going to continue building our movie rating app. And last time we were able to implement the delete and read from our CRUD acronym, which allowed us to get this movie listing here and get a movie listing that responded to changes in real time. So if I went back to the database and changed the rating of one of these movies, like The Witches, from a three to a five, and flip back to the app, we can see that updated in real time. Anytime the data changes, this listing changed. So let me set that back to three. Um, and we, we learned how to do deleting. So if I go to this page and I click delete on one of these movies, um, we removed it from the database. Now we're gonna focus on the C and the um, U of CRUD. So if I go back to my whiteboard here, we were doing create, read, update, delete. So we, we covered read, delete. We're now gonna focus on update and create. So in terms of the application, I'm gonna flip over to the finished version for um, this week, where we're going to implement this add movie form so that I could come in and add a, a new movie, hit save, have it show up in our listing here, and then also implement the edit form so that we can click edit on any of these and get the movie showing up, come in, make a change to it, flip back, see that change reflected in our application. So as we're working, it's always good to have the documentation open. So Cloud Firestore here, the page that we're gonna be wanting to focus on for the Firestore information is the add page, which tells us that we have a couple of different ways to add data to our database. One is with the set command, one is with the add command. So the set command here is if you have already got a reference to a specific document that's in a collection and you know its ID, you can just set all of the fields for that document. If we flip down to add, there's another way that we can put data in and that is if we were to get a reference to a collection and then call dot add. Uh, whatever we put in the argument here for add is going to get injected into a document with an automatically generated ID for us. And there's actually a third one here on the page, update a doc. So with the set command, it will remove all of the fields by default and just set the ones that you are specifying. The update command here, if we have a reference to a document, we call dot .update. That will only change the fields that we have specified here. So going back to the whiteboard, our create, we're gonna run on a collection reference, and then update, you can run on a document reference with set to set all of the fields, or document reference dot .update to update just specific fields. So that's all we're gonna need in terms of the Firebase API. The rest of what we're gonna be doing today is learning how to use those in a more complex React application where we're going to handle loading states and especially when we handle the edit page, we're gonna kind of have to chain, we're gonna to have to load the initial data, put it into the form, and then have another asynchronous action when the player hit, uh, when the user hits save. So to get started, Grab the starter files. They are in, um, they're linked below. And the starter files, one thing that I want to point out so this has last week's um, code plus the solution to the challenge. To get your project working, you're going to have to go into the Firebase.js file and insert your Firebase config here for the API key, the project ID, etc. Uh, if you just try and load it with this placeholder in here, your application will not have credentials to actually access a Firebase database. And along with that really quickly, solution to the challenge from last week was to go into a couple of your movies and add another field. So here I've added a review field just to the witches movie and to the color out of space. And I've done that through the user interface in Cloud Firestore. And then I have modified my movie component to pull out that review and then on the page display that review if it exists. 
So if there is a review, put that here in that div. Otherwise, put a no review saved message. So we end up with something that looks like this for any movie that doesn't have reviews. And then we have our reviews inserted in here for um, those that have it. This kind of pattern of handling conditionally um, rendering based on whether or not you have data is tends to be important in NoSQL databases where you can have fields that are optional in your database and you want to gracefully handle those when it comes to your React application. Okay, enough intro, let's dive in here. And so what I wanna talk about before we get started is this add movie page. So one of the challenges that we're gonna run into um, and one of the big topics to work through today is um, handling the fact that both our add movie and our edit movie basically need the same form on the page. And as soon as you end up in that place where you have two different components that need the same thing on the page, that's an opportunity to modularize your code so that you don't end up duplicating your logic and copy and pasting. Because if we just approach this naively, what we might do is create an add movie page put all of our form logic in it, have an edit movie page, all of the form logic duplicated, like copy and pasted into that. Um, and then we end up in a situation where we have something working, but it is really hard to maintain. So to talk through that, I'm gonna pull up a whiteboard and do a little bit of quick diagramming. So we're gonna have an add movie page or an add movie component, and we're gonna have an edit movie component. And on both of these, we need to have some kind of form on the page. Maybe there's like a header that's unique to each of these, and then we have the form, and the form's gonna have like a few input fields. I'm not trying to be very high fidelity here with my mock-up. So just pretend that these are forms with input fields. And this is a little save or submit icon below it. So both pages need this form logic, which means we're gonna have to store like some state on both of them. So we'd have to have the title. Um, we'd have to keep track of the year, the um, release, uh, what else did we have in there? The, re uh, the rating maybe the review as well, and we'd need to duplicate that state over here, year, rating. We would have to have some CSS and markup for the form. I have to have that same stuff over here. Uh, if we had some like validation logic, we'd have to duplicate that too. And validation here meaning like if we wanna make sure that they didn't enter a negative year or they only we made sure that they only had a rating between one and five uh, we'd have to do that on both pages and so the problem becomes when you have this duplication you know it's really easy to like write one of these copy and paste it and and have it tweaked to work for the other page but then as soon as you need to maintain these going forward like we have to add another field to both of these forms now we have to edit two files or if we need to change the validation logic because our rating system went from one to five to one to 10, we have to come back and change both of these files. And as soon as you have to do that, you open yourself up to a lot of bugs. So what we wanna do is, is refactor this so that instead of having two components, we're gonna have three components. So we will still have our add movie an edit movie, but the place where the form goes is where we actually will use a separate form component. So we'll create a movie form and that has our fields and submit button in it. So our add movie and edit movie will be able to pass information into our movie form using props. 
So for instance, like our edit movie, when it uses the movie form, it will want to say, you know, the, the title field here should start out as the witches or whatever we want to pass in. So props are going to be how we're communicating from the parent, the edit movie, add movie to the child, the movie form. And then what we're going to have is the movie form when the submit button is clicked is going to communicate back to our add movie and edit movie using one of those props. So our add movie will pass an on submit function and same here. And this is how our add movie component will be able to be notified when the movie form is done at ed being edited. And same for edit movie. So we're going to pass as one of those props an on submit function, which will allow us to in add movie and edit movie get access to all of the form data and then do our database logic. Like with add movie, we are going to go ahead and create a new entry in our database and edit movie. We're going to go ahead and look up an existing one and edit it. So this general approach we're, we're applying here is trying to modularize our code. So we're trying to make it so that each component has as few responsibilities um, as possible. So our movie form, this doesn't care at all about the database. It doesn't even know about the database. So it doesn't know about DB. Instead, all it cares about is the data cares about the movie data and validation. So when I say it cares about the movie data, I just mean these forms on the page. All it cares about is that title form, the year released form, the rating form, and making sure that those pieces of information match our validation criteria. Like our, our ratings are always between one and five. Um, and it, so it doesn't care about the DB, which means that our add movie, whoops, cannot write today, and our edit movie are really concerned with the database logic. So they, they will talk to Cloud Firestore um, to implement whatever needs to happen on the add movie page and the edit movie page. And they don't necessarily have to worry about how that sort of data is edited. That's the movie, respon the movie form's responsibility. The bigger your project projects become, the more this modularization matters. So the deeper we get in here, the more we're going to be kind of breaking our projects apart into smaller pieces and applying more advanced patterns to make sure that our code is maintainable. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about here is what happens on the add movie page and the edit movie page in terms of the asynchronous flow of information. So on the add movie page, um, if we were to kind of do a little flow chart, we would have load form, user, they're going to edit and then submit the form. And then we're going to need to talk to the database. Uh, so talk to Cloud Firestore and submit that movie. So add movie. Firestore. And this is going to have either an error or kind of success as the outcome. So we're going to be loading for a little bit and then we will have either success or error. And that's going to be the flow that we need to implement in add movie. Edit movie is going to be a little bit more complicated because we can't load the form right away. When we're editing a movie, we need to talk to the database to get the movie's data that we're trying to edit so that we can preload the form with that information. So if we're trying to edit the witches, we need to pull the witches, the rating, the year released, fill it in in the form, and then kick things off. So we're going to need to load movie from Firestore. And this is going to have our success and error as well, 
because this is an asynchronous action. And if it is successful, then we can go ahead and load the form, do the same logic as we have for the ad where the user submits, and then we update movie in Firestore and have another branch here for when it's successful and when there's an error. So when I say that most of the complexity in this video is going to come from our React application as opposed to just the Firestore uh, API, this is what I'm referring to, is that we're gonna have this edit page that has this chain of things that needs to happen. And we wanna make sure that we catch those errors when they occur. So we're gonna have two asynchronous things that are happening on that edit page um, that we have to be mindful about. That's enough of a high level. Let's look at the code and, and then start implementing this. So if I pull up the add movie page, the add movie page has a placeholder function here that's asynchronous for when the form is submitted. And then what we have is the movie form component gets loaded on here. So there's not much in this component other than handling the database logic and then um, sort of deferring to the movie form. And if I check out the movie form, this is the thing that I've already pre-filled with a lot of what we need. Um, so it's a form and it has a few pieces of state, one for the title, the rating, the release year. Uh, it has a spot for error messages. It handles when those input elements are changed. So when the title input element is changed, we update the title. Same thing for the rating, same thing for the year released. It has a placeholder for when the form is submitted. And then it has the markup here. So for instance, like here is our movie title where there's a label um, next to a input of type text that has that value of our title and has the on title change function bound to the on change prop. So if we check it out, when you go to the add movie page here, we have our movie form loading and we have that title that's coming from add that add movie component. This component has uh, a few other things. So we, we have our input here for the movie title. We have our input here for the rating, input here for the release year. We have an input for saving. And then this whole thing is wrapped in a field set and field sets are nice in uh, HTML because they can take a disabled attribute that if true, disables everything in this form. So if I pop open my developer tools here and go to my components and check out using the inspector, the movie form, the prop, Whoops, let's see, do I have it here? Yeah, so the prop here is saving. If we set that to true, that flips the disabled attribute here. Um, so with this component, I can say is saving, set it to true, and now the whole form disables because of that field set, so I can't actually submit again. So this is gonna be important because if we look at our, our flowchart again for add movie, when the user submits, and we add the movie to Firestore, there's this loading phase before we either succeed or error that we need to handle. And when that's happening, we wanna make sure that the user doesn't actually try and like save multiple times. So as soon as we start that asynchronous action, we'll use that is saving prop here, flip it to true so that the form locks. And when it's done, we can set it to false um, so that the user can start editing the field again. So the other thing that's in here is a message prop. So if we pass a message in, it puts it on the page above the form and we will use that prop so that we can put some extra information into this form when we're done saving. So if we pass in a message and say movie added, 
and save, that's going to show up above the form. So we, we'll kind of use these in concert for our add page. So when we start adding, we will flip that to true. We will have no message here. And then when the operation is successful, we can get rid of the saving and display our movie added success message into the form. So that's the plan. We won't have to edit much in here. For now, I'm going to leave out the validation logic, like making sure that the title is not blank and making sure that the rating is not like a negative number or it's not greater than five. And same thing for the release year. I'm gonna kind of leave that out um, so that we can just focus on the database specific logic. But we've done those things before so that you should be able to find uh, figure those out from um, the quiz game when we did some validation. Oh, and last thing that I forgot to mention here before we get started is that in the pages, there is a add movie page, which sets the um, title of the page and loads our add movie component. And there's another one for the edit movie page, which we're going to have to come in and edit when it... Uh, comes time to working on this edit feature. So getting started, we're, we're working on add, and what we always want to do is make sure we have the docs handy as we're working on this. So adding to Cloud Firestore, we are going to not be setting an existing document uh, because we don't have any documents for the new movies yet. So what we're going to be doing is following the add a document guide here where we're going to get a reference to our collection. We already know how to do that. We've exported it from our, Fire um, our Firebase module. And then we're going to call the add command here. And if we look at the API reference quickly, we have a collection reference. And we are calling add where we pass in some data. It gives us a promise that resolves to a reference to that document. Okay, so let's start working on this. First things first, let's figure out how to add a document from um, just JavaScript. So we have our movies collection, we call dot add, and then we pass in our data so we could put some placeholder year released 2020 rating four and you know what i'm not sure that that's the property that i used so let me just quickly double check no it is release year so I want to make sure that this matches exactly in spelling and casing. So this would give us back a promise. And what we want to do is use our async knowledge. So we're going to create a add movie function here. We will mark it as asynchronous. We will put this in here. We will make sure that we handle the errors appropriately. So we have a try. Make sure that we catch any errors. For now, we will just throw those to the console. And let's await this. We don't really care about the sort of reference, the document reference that we get back from this um, because we don't have to do anything once we've added the movie. So maybe what I'll just do is print out something like saved so that we can see something in the console. So once I've got this, I'm going to put in add movie. I'm going to save this. And this is going to run immediately because of hot reloading. So by the time I save this, which I just did, and flip back to our database, we should see a new entry in here. Where is it? Here we go, movie title, 2020, rating of four. And since our uh, all movies page is reactive, 
and listens for real-time updates, we should see that here. Movie title 2020, no review saved. So I'm going to delete this, flip back, comment out this code, and then I am going to copy this and put it over in our add movie for reference. So we know that when it comes time to interacting with Firestore, this is all we have to do. And instead of passing in our title release here and rating, we want to pass in that information from the movie form. So how do we get that information from the movie form? And that's where we go back to this diagram add movie we will pass information to the movie form via props and then one of those props is going to be an on submit function um, and that's how the movie form will notify add movie about whatever is coming uh, whatever has been edited in this form so to see something happening why don't we put in an alert here so we're going to alert you want to add and let me make this a template string. Title, rating, release year. So this is our function that we want to pass down as a property to the movie form so that movie form can invoke it and tell us the title, rating, and release here. So if we look at movie form, movie form um, has no property here, so we're going to have to add one. We can call this on submit, and then in our add movie, we can say, okay, that new property on submit, we are going to set equal to our function that we declared here. So on movie submit. So inside of our movie form, we now have a function passed in here for on submit that we can run down here and pass in the title rating and release here. So this function is bound to the on submit of our form. So when the form is submitted, you know, when someone has hit the input button of type submit, the form, this function will be triggered by the form. And this function, we have access to the title rating and release here. here. So if we call the on submit property, that's basically allowing us to pass the title rating and release here up here to title rating release here. So let's make sure that works. I'm going to go to the add movie page. I am going to type in a test title, a rating of two, release year of 2000, hit save. And we can see you want to add test title with a rating of two, release year of 2000. So our form is set up. When that submit button is clicked, it passes along this information for us to actually then add it to our database. So I can comment this out. That was just purely for us to see the flow of information. And then what we can do is this function we have marked as asynchronous. So we can have our try catch. And into our try, we can await movies collection dot add and make sure that movies collection you are importing it up here at the top I used the IntelliSense to autocomplete that for me and what we want to pass in is our title and pass it in using and um, specify that the field of name title is equal to this variable that we called title the field of rating should be equal to this variable called rating, and the field of release year should be equal to our variable release year. So we're just creating an object literal here where we specify the field name and then the value. And this will work fine, but we can actually shorten this. 
um, in JavaScript, if you have a variable that you're trying to put into an object and the name of the field matches the name of the variable, you can do a shorter syntax where you just say title, rating, release year. And this is going to put into your variable, into your object that we're creating here, this object literal, it is going to put a field of title equal to the value of this variable title. So let's do console log saved and console error error save it and see if we actually get something showing up and if that works then we will deal with the asynchronous logic and making sure that we lock the form while we are saving so let's add test movie again let's give it a rating of 5 1999 save check our database There we go, test movie 1999, rating of five. And if we go to our movie listing, we should be able to see uh, test movie rating of five 1999. So we've got a couple in here, so I'm gonna clear those out. Um, and go back to the add movie. So we're almost done. We just need to handle this asynchronous logic. So when we're adding the movie to Firestore, we need to load for a little bit and then handle the fact that it was successful or handle the fact that there was an error. So going back in here, we're going to need to store some state. So we're going to need to store a Boolean variable to let us know whether we are currently trying to save this movie. So when we kick this off, we will say that's true. And when it's done, we'll say that's false. And we also need a place to store that message, whether it was successful or whether um, there was something that went wrong. So I'm gonna get rid of this code that we've got for adding the movie. And we are going to create two pieces of state. One is gonna be a Boolean is saving. I'm gonna start it off as false. And since I'm using state, I need to make sure to update my React here my import to bring in the use state function so the second piece of state that i'm creating here is our message so i'm going to start that off as an empty string and when we're about to start saving we can set is saving to true and we can clear our previous form message if there is any When we are done saving, we can set is saving to false. So as long as this asynchronous code is running, our is saving will be set to true. As soon as it's done, we will be back to false. And then we can set our form message here to be saved successfully. And set our form message here to be something went wrong. Please try again. So at this point, we should um, be able to inspect this in our components panel. So what I'm going to do is turn my network connectivity down to a slower rating momentarily so that as we change this movie form, um, we should see these pieces of state change. So I'm, I'm selecting the add movie. This first one is our is saving. This next one is our um, form message. So I'm going to say test, hit save, see it flip to true. And then when it resolves, flips back to false, prints out save successfully. So we can see our state is working and now we just need to hook it up to the form. So I'm going to flip back to online here. And the movie form, if we check that out, we can see that it expects a property of message and a property of is saving. And is saving is that thing that down here disables our field set, which basically makes the form um, dim out and makes it impossible to edit and resubmit. 
So all we have to do is pass in that property of is saving, and this should all work. And then our message, all we have to do is pass in a value to this message, and that will display at the top of the form. So our movie form expects an is saving property and expects a message property. And all we have to do is say, okay, is saving is equal to whatever this Boolean variable is. And our message is equal to whatever our form message variable is at any moment in time. So if I flip back and I think I'm gonna drop my network connection down slightly here for this test. Test two, a rating of four, 1999, hit save, disables, and it's done, save successfully. And we should be able to then flip over, turn my network back up to full speed and see that rating of four, our, our data, um, all of that here in our movie listing. And with that, we have now successfully covered our ad. So we have create done, read done, delete done. And the last thing to add is that edit page that update functionality. So this one's gonna be very similar to our add movie where we're still using the movie form, but it's a little bit more complicated because there is an asynchronous action that has to happen before we can even load the form. Um, when we go to the edit page for a particular movie, we gotta retrieve that data and then we need to put it into the form and allow the user to edit it and then update that movie. The first thing that we're going to have to do for this edit page is figure out a way that when we go to our edit movie page, we can actually pass along that information. So we want to be able to create a link in our, our application where it's like edit and then we pass in the unique identifier for that movie so that we can locate it from our database. So we might want to pass in, say, like this ID. So you could go to slash edit slash that ID and have that form show up here loaded with that movie. And remember, we can't like currently rely on the name of a movie as the unique identifier because like movies, there are multiple movies called The Witches. Um, remakes are common. So we want to use that unique identifier to find movies for editing. So let me pull up a page from React Router, which is our routing solution in this application that talks about um, URL parameters. So URL parameters are kind of like placeholders in the URL. So um, inside of our route, we can specify a path that has a variable in it. So if we go to slash Netflix, then the variable ID in our router is filled in with that value of Netflix. So like if I click on Netflix, we can see that the URL changed to slash Netflix, which is coming from this link. And what's being rendered is uh, this route. So it is matching the fact that it's slash Netflix and rendering this component, which is able to pull that parameter. So this ID parameter from the URL. So when it runs on slash Netflix, it grabs that value of ID where the value is Netflix and it can use it on the page. And so if I click on any of these, this same child component is rendering. It is just this ID that's changing in our URL. So what we want to be able to do is make sure that our app, the route for the edit page here has our ID and the syntax here is colon and then the name of the variable that you want to use. So I have already filled this in in the starter files, which means that we can go to edit movie, which is the component that that route loads. And we can use the use params hook from React Router DOM. So if we import that, we will be able to use params and grab that ID. 
I'm going to import use params from React Router DOM. At the top of my edit movie page, I will say id equals use params. And this is just destructuring syntax. So as long as this is going to give me back an object that um, will have our ID on it. So instead of having two lines of code here to pull out the ID, I can grab the ID directly into a variable called ID. So to make sure this is working, I'm just going to put the ID on the page here. And then in my browser, if I go to slash edit and then type in a bunch of gibberish, we can see that accessible to the page. So if we actually were to grab this ID and go here, we see that the page has access to it. So the key is that this variable matches our parameter as defined in our route path. So this name ID has to exactly match that parameter. If this were something different, like movie ID, then my application is going to show undefined because this is now stored in the parameter object under the key of movie ID. So our page can go ahead and grab that ID and then we can pass that ID along to our edit movie component here as a ID property to make it accessible to our edit movie. So we could just pass it in, say that the ID property is equal to this ID value, save it, go in here, and then from our props, we can pull out the ID. And to make sure that this is working, just go ahead and drop the ID onto the page through our props and see that it is pull, it's showing up again on the page, but now it's inside of the edit movie component. So I can get rid of that. And what we wanna do when this page loads is look up that movie that has that ID. So if we go back to our whiteboard, we need to do a read where we get a document, a document reference, and we do dot get on it to fill in the form with that document's data. Which is the same thing we, we have listed over here of loading that movie from Firestore. So let's go ahead and check the docs. For Firestore, when we want to read data, getting data once, we can see there's a section here for getting a document. If I flip down to it, all we have to do to get a reference, a document reference, is have the collection and then say dot .doc and pass in the ID. And that will give us a document reference that we can then call get on, which gives us our promise that we can listen for um, to kick off the rest of this flow. So we've already done getting before, so I'm not going to go through the whole flow of writing this in a, a regular JavaScript file without React, but I would encourage you to do that when, anytime you're working on a new feature. Here, what I want to do is make sure that I have a place to store whether or not we are loading, whether or not we have an error message, and the data from the movie. And I've created those for you. So is loading starts off as false. There's no error message and the movie data is empty. So then what we want to do when we read, which we did in our movie listing, is run use effect to actually initiate a side effect um, when our component is mounted. So I'm going to import use effect. And remember, use effect if we pass in we pass in a function to it, anything that we put in here will run when that component mounts. And the second set of parameters here is uh, what this side effect depends on. 
So if you pass in nothing, that means it doesn't depend on any information. So it is only going to run when the component is displayed. If I were to pass in the ID here, this is going to run anytime that ID property changes. And since we're going to be using the ID inside of our use effect, it, it's a good idea for us to specify that as a dependency. So if we flip back, check out our console, we should see fetch that movie gets displayed. And if I refresh my page, it gets displayed as soon as the component is loaded. So if I flip um, to another page and then hit the back button, fetch that movie displays again. So I can get rid of this line. And what we can do is run that code that we were seeing in the browser where we were talking to our movie collection and pulling out a specific doc. Um, I just IntelliSense asked it to bring in that import by hitting tab. So movie collection here dot doc, we will pass in our ID dot get. And just for reference, we it, this is our movie collection variable, movies collection variable, and then dot doc gives us back a document reference, and dot get gives us the promise that kicks things off. So this runs a promise. And this is our basic structure. But remember uh, that all of this asynchronous stuff has to happen inside of an async function. Right now, if I check out my console, I should see that there's an error. I cannot use a wait outside of an async function. So when you're running an asynchronous action inside of a use effect, you want to create a new function in here. Run this in that asynchronous function. And then call that down here. So we have created that asynchronous function. We initiate it inside of our use effect. And let's look at our docs here for what movie snapshot is. So we had a document reference. We called get on it which tells us it returns a promise that resolves to a document snapshot. If I click on the document snapshot, this contains data read from your document in, in your Firestore database, and the data can be extracted with the dot data um, method. So it has a property for ID, it has a Boolean property to tell us whether there's any data there, and then it has a data method, which gives us back all of the fields as an object. So what we're going to want to do is make sure that that document actually exists. If we cross check here, we can see if there is no document at the location, um, the resulting document will be empty and exist will be false. So if we try and get something um, and there's nothing with that ID, Instead of getting an error, it is going to just give us a document uh, snapshot with the exist uh, set to false. So we want to be able to handle that. Like if someone made a typo in their URL and looked up an ID that doesn't actually exist in our database, we want to handle that. OK, so we've got our movie snapshot. So we can say if the movie snapshot doesn't exist, then we actually want to kick ourselves over to this error. So I'm going to throw a new error here. No such movie exists. As soon as we throw the error, the, this try block is done and execution is handed over to our catch. So what we can do is 
set that error into our error message. Set error message with error. So we've handled our retrieval and error. What we want to do is now extract that data. So we've used the exist property. Now let's use the data property. So movie snapshot dot or um, the data method. When we call that, we get all of our data back as an object that we can drop into the movie data state. So set movie data to data. The only thing that's left to do here is make sure that we handle the loading state. So before any of this runs, we want to set loading to be true. And then after it finishes, regardless of whether it was successful or there was an error, we want to reset our loading to false. So if we give this a save, we should be able to go to that URL, open up our components panel in our dev tools and see is loading error message and movie data being filled in. And uh, after we check that out and make sure it's working, we'll come down and talk about what's happening down here in the return. So I am going to turn my network speed down slightly. Go to my components. Refresh my page. And this is going to take a second because all of the application is now being loaded over a slower internet connection. I can see, oh, even that happened very, very quickly still. Um, so the loading was momentarily true and then our data was pulled in. So we've got rating of three, the witches release year review because all of those are pulled from this ID. So for testing this page, as we're working, what you want to do is make sure you go to your database and grab a specific ID from your database for mocking here. So you would go to slash edit slash that ID. If I grab, turn my network back up to full speed. So if I grab a different movie here for the key and run it and check out my edit movie, um, the state is now filled in with Logan with a rating of four release year of 2017. Okay, so this seems to be working. What's going on here in our markup is similar to other pages. Our loading Boolean variable is being used to control whether this loading spinner is put on the page. Our error message variable is being used to determine whether or not this error message is being put on the page. And then our movie data variable is being used to determine whether or not that form gets loaded on the page. So if we look at it again and refresh, we can see momentarily that loading spinner is on the page before our form gets loaded. And that's that asynchronous um, action where we're talking to the database and retrieving the, the data. While we're at it, let's make sure that our error actually works. So I'm going to copy this and just put in some gibberish. Whoops, okay, cool, perfect. So we got an error here. Um, it's telling us objects are not valid as React children, and it is telling us this happens in our error message component, um, and also happen, it, it's coming from edit movie line 49. So if I look at line 49, here it's telling me that I tried to pass in an object as a child, and that's because I broke our pattern here as I was writing it, and I passed in an error object. So we threw a new error here, um, and we, instead of displaying like a generic error message like we've done on other pages, we actually took that error object and tried to put it here. So what I want to do is just say something went wrong. Please try again. So this is being this error is going to catch if there was no movie that exists or if um, something went wrong with like our network connection. 
So we're just displaying something generic, no such movie exists, and I'm gonna make sure that that actually, we're gonna use our display as card property here to make sure that that shows up in a card so that it's visible on this background. And for our purposes as developers, we can see what specific error um, when this application is loaded by going into the console. Okay, we have, if we look back at our flowchart here, we loaded the movie from Firestore, we handled the error, and now we need to handle the success. So when we get that movie data back, make sure that we pass it into the form so that our form uses it, and make sure that after the form is submitted, we go ahead and do our update logic. So what I wanna do here is use this movie data variable to pass information into our movie form. So our movie form, if we check it out and we, for instance, change the initial state here from three to five. Uh, whoops, let me make sure that I'm going to a valid page. So I'm gonna grab a key for color out of space, paste it in. Okay, so my movie form now loads with a value of five. If I change it to one, it loads with a value of one. So what we really wanna do for this page is be able to configure what these default values should be, or uh, these initial values should be. If this form is being used by the add movie page, then it's fine to just sort of pick a default of an empty string, three, 2020. But if it's being used by our edit movie page, we wanna be able to configure that to say, hey, use this information we're giving you as the initial state. So I'm gonna create a prop called initial state. And um, I'm going to supply a default value. So if this property is not given, then it is going to be equal to an empty object. But if it is given, we will have it pulled out into a local variable here. And what we're gonna do is use initial state to configure these three fields uh, or these, these three initial state values. So what we, can, what we need to do is handle the situation where none of that is supplied. So if the initial state title is equal to undefined, then we will set the initial state title to be an empty string. And we want to do that for rating and set the rating to be three. And we want to do that for our release year and set the release year to 2020. So by the time we've finished running these three lines of code, our initial state has either been set up already with a title rating and release year, or it has now been set up with a title of an empty string, rating of three, release year of 2020. So into this use state, I can specify that the initial state's title is what we use here. Initial state dot rating is what we use here. And initial state dot release here is what we use here. So to make sure that this working, I'm gonna change these so that we can see something new happening on the page. So those defaults are taking uh, control here. Undo this. So what this is set up is that if we pass in a variable for our props, or we pass in an object for our props that has title rating release here, that will set up our form properly. So for edit movie, if I pass in an object with a title of blah, blah, when this loads, that title has now been used as opposed to our default empty string. And what's really great here is that if I print out our movie data, this is that piece of state that we're setting here 
from our asynchronous action with our database when we retrieve the movie data, that is already an object that has title uh, release year rating in it. So instead of passing an object here where we're specifying specific values, all we have to do is say that the initial state is equal to our movie data object, give this a save, and there we go. When we go to this ID, color out of space loads, if I grab a different one, go to edit slash that ID, the witches loads. And then the last thing that we have to do, if we go back to our flowchart here, so we loaded the movie, we passed in the form, we now need to wait for the user to submit that form and go ahead and update the movie in Firestore. So if we go back to our edit movie component, we have our logic for loading that movie. We have a function here that's asynchronous with title rating release here. We just got to do the same thing we, we had set up with um, our add movie page here where we passed in the on submit and we're also going to need to have this is saving and form message logic set up. So let's make sure we build this out in steps. Movie, let's go back to edit movie. Let's make sure that we have this data. So alert. Um, title. Rating. Release year. On movie submit, we go ahead and pass that in to our on submit prompt. So if I check out the movie form, we can see we called that property on submit. So let's save this, make sure that it's printing out. So I'm gonna just put an exclamation point so we can see something different and good. We've got um, all that information from the form coming back to us. So the next thing that we would want to do is create those pieces of state that we had um, on the other page for when we're saving. So is saving, set is saving. This starts off as false. And then we also want our form message. As an empty string. So remember from the other page is saving was whether or not this asynchronous action was running so that we could actually disable our form when we are saving something. And the form message was that extra message that we could display at the top of the form. So we passed in the is saving prop here and we also passed in our form message here. So no errors and to make sure that those are working, let me just quickly, let's turn is saving to true. When it loads, this is locked. Good, that's doing what it should. And let's put in a message in our form message and make sure that shows up. Good, okay, so these two pieces of state are set up. So then all we need to do is focus on our asynchronous logic. So again, turning to Firestore, and what we would normally wanna do is um, mock this up outside of our React logic. Um, since we've done that a few times already, I'm gonna just put this directly into React, but keep that in mind that if you hit an error, what you should do is you know pause where you are, Try to do this in regular JavaScript and then bring it into React. So we're back to our add page, adding data. And we can do either a set or we can do an update command to update our document reference. I think we'll go with set where we are going to have our movie collection, ask for the document by ID and then set all of the fields. So
So this is an asynchronous function, so we should be fine doing try catch error and uh, awaiting our movies collection dot doc id dot set. And here we pass in our title rating release year. And same thing, we could do title, the title field is equal to the value of our variable, or because these happen to work out to be the same, we can just do title rating release year. So when this finishes, we can set our form message to display something to the user like saved successfully. And if we've got an error, then we can go ahead and set a form message to say something went wrong. Editing this movie, please try again. And then for our purposes as developers, we want to make sure that we've, we've got the full error in our console to be able to see what's happening. So this is our logic for saving. And what we want to do before that kicks off is set is saving to be true. When it's done, set is saving to be false. And before our logic kicks off, we can re reset our form message so that there is no lingering form message from the last time we tried to save. Okay, so we'll give this a save. Hopefully we didn't make any typos here. So I'm still loading a valid key from my database here. So my, my database knows the right ID change the title, change the rating, change the release year, give it a save, it locks, and then our message of save successfully shows up. If I look at my movie listing, I can now see the witches showing up uh, with the new rating, new release year. And all my other features like deleting should still work for removing that from the database last piece that we want to add is to actually hook this up so that if I hit edit, we go directly to that edit page um, rather than having to type in slash edit slash the ID. So what I want to do here is go to my movie page and the edit button needs to link to the movie uh, link to that slash edit slash ID page. So when we set up our movie, we made sure that it had an ID prop. So it already knows its ID. And if we look at our movie listing, which was looping over and displaying those movies, we passed it in from the database. So all our movies already have the information we need to just verify that. I'm just gonna throw the ID prop onto the page we can see all of their IDs here. So all we would need to do is update this. So we have our previous knowledge that we could use where we actually just change this to a link and have the link point to a particular location. Um, but in this case, I want the styling to match for our buttons and um, semantically, it, it's fine for us to use a button here since it's an action that's internal to our application as opposed to taking the user to a new um, page. So what I'm going to do is pull up the docs for React Router. And if we look at the hooks, there is a hook for use history. So we've seen the use params already. Use history allows us to actually navigate programmatically. So their example actually actually shows using a button instead of a link to navigate. So you can create a button and on click, you can push something into the history. So this would take you to the uh, homepage as long as you have imported that history from React Router DOM. So I'm gonna come back here, import use history, from React Router DOM. And on click, I want to 
navigate to history. Oops. Oh, I gotta bring it, I gotta use the hook first. So let's create that history variable. Const history is equal to use history. And then I can go down to this button and say history. Whoops. I just I need the closing curly bracket here, history dot push edit slash ID. And if you want, you can put this into a separate function like we did up here with delete. Uh, for one line functions, I will sometimes use the, uh, I, I will sometimes just put an arrow function directly in here. So this is a function that regardless of what it's passed, just does history.push to edit slash ID. So with that change, should be able to fly back here, click on test two, change this to Superman, which I don't remember the release date, but whatever, we'll save it, save successfully, go back to all movies, we can see that's there. So I should be able to click on any of these and have them loaded into our form. I should still be able to delete and I should still be able to add movies. Whew. And with that, what we should have is all of the operations of CRUD. We, we have created, we have read, and we've both done the one-time get and the real-time get. We have done update and we have done delete. So we have done all the basic operations that you need to know how to do with a database. And by doing that, we finished our movie rating app. So it, it doesn't have user accounts. So going to this application means that anyone, um, this kind of like one shared account, anyone that comes to this application will be editing the movies that are here. Uh, that's fine for where we are at this point. We'll learn how to add accounts to Firestore later. Um, but for now, we, we have a serviceable, serviceable app that can store some data in it and is using Cloud Firestore uh, for create, read, update, delete. So just quick review, because there were a lot of concepts in this video, and the Cloud Firestore concepts, those were the kind of smallest piece of the puzzle here. A lot of what we were dealing with is the asynchronous logic, and especially like our edit movie, which has a chain of asynchronous actions. So it has a use effect that runs when the page loads to grab that initial movie the first time, uh, the, the data from that movie. And then it also had a movie submit, uh, which ran our second asynchronous action of actually saving edits to that movie. And a lot of the complication of building this user interface, interface comes from the fact that we had those two asynchronous actions. They both had these loading um, states to them. They both had some kind of result where it could either be successful when, and we get the movie data or there would be an error. And here with our saving, we, we kind of combine those both into one use state here where if it was successful, we displayed a good message. If it was an error, we displayed um, a, a try again message. So a lot here, but this is all you need to be able to tackle your final project in this class. So should, you should be in a good place to use this project as your template for building your final project in this class.